I'm so glad that people have finally started watching Shogun. This show seriously deserves more credit and easily has the potential to be one of the most revolutionary dramas of the year. It's got old school feudal politics, a good amount of action, some romance and well, plenty of controversies. What more can you ask? Although the show is essentially fiction, the main characters were actually adapted from a book written by James Clavell in 1975. There was also a very famous television miniseries during the 1980s of the same name based on the same book, but in reality, all the main characters are actually inspired by the real life stories of real warlords of Japan back during the 1600s. Now, if you've watched the show, you already know that the key pieces in this board game are Yoshi Toranaga, John Blackthorne, and Toda Mariko. While other lords exist to significantly turn the course of the plot, most of it revolves around Toranaga, whose character is based on Tokugawa Ieyasu, the first shogun of the Tokugawa shogunate, and one of the three great unifiers of Japan. This guy was very much real, and in fact laid the foundation of a shogunate that lasted for the next 265 years. Of course, with just four episodes on air, we can't tell you much about this series adaptation of the character, but we can definitely discuss the real guy who inspired the seemingly complex samurai lord. So without wasting another moment, let's get right into it! Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us it means a lot. So thank you, and let's begin. Tokugawa Ieyasu. In 1543, a boy named Matsudaira Takechiyo was born at Okazaki Castle, near the modern city of Nagoya, who would later become known as the great Tokugawa Ieyasu. His family were wealthy landowners called daimyo, which is the Japanese term for a large landowner and even though they claimed to be related to the powerful Minamoto clan, who ruled from the 12th to the 15th centuries and established the first shogun, they were not very strong. Ieyasu lived in Mikawa province on a big island in Japan. During a time called the Sengoku period, which was known for constant fighting among daimyos, keeping Japan divided. Ieyasu's father changed who he supported and as a result, when Ieyasu was 4 or 5 years old, his father had to offer him as a hostage to make alliances with another powerful clan, the Imagawa. Now, in the 16th century, the daimyos constantly competed for power and land, hence betrayal was common even within families. So to make alliances, families would exchange hostages, and hence Ieyasu spent a lot of time away from his family as a child. On his way from the Okazaki castle to the Imagawa base at Sunpu, the Oda clan, who were rivals, stopped Ieyasu and threatened to harm him unless his family broke their ties with the Imagawa. Even though it was risky, Ieyasu's father refused to give in. The Oda clan abducted him as a hostage and took care of Ieyasu for a few years after. While growing up as a hostage, Matsudaira Takechiyo was diligent and smart, while receiving military training and learning how to govern. When his father died in 1549, Takechiyo became the leader of his clan, even though he was just 6 years old. At 9 years old, he was sent back to the Imagawa clan as a hostage in Sunpu. Later as a teenager, he got married and had his first kids. Throughout his life he had two wives, many concubines, and had a total of 11 sons and 5 daughters. Things started changing by 1560 as the Imagawa clan was getting disorganized and a strong warrior named Oda Nobunaga was leading the Oda clan to unite Japan through war. Seeing a chance to take back control of his family's land again, Takechiyo built an army, improved the administration of the Matsudaira clan, and switched his loyalty to Oda Nobunaga. He then changed his name to Tokugawa Ieyasu and eventually rose to power, becoming a powerful daimyo that everyone was forced to oblige. <laughs> Tokugawa Ieyasu's rise to power. Over the next 20 years, Ieyasu became more prominent as he expanded his land through his alliance with Oda Nobunaga, who then became the most powerful person in Japan. Alongside the Oda clan, Ieyasu fought many battles against the Takeda family and finally beat them in 1582. But the same year, Nobunaga was murdered by one of his own people, although some assume that he was betrayed by his vassals and was forced to embrace seppuku, which is a Japanese tradition of honor suicide among samurai. This made things very chaotic as his death left behind a huge power vacuum. But eventually, Toyotomi Hideyoshi, who was a great general under Nobunaga, took over and became the strongest military leader in Japan. 
Hideyoshi and Tokugawa share a very hostile relationship, but in 1590, they joined forces against the Hojo family, who controlled a lot of land in the Kanto region of eastern Japan. Now you must be thinking, how is this relevant to the show? Well, do you remember the Taiko who died in the beginning of Shogun after forming a region of five council members till his son came of age? That character is actually based off of the real life of Toyotomi Hideyoshi, one of the three great unifiers of Japan. So after defeating the Hojo family, Hideyoshi made a deal with Ieyasu and offered him control of eight provinces in the Kanto region, only if Ieyasu gave up the five provinces he already had in central Japan. This was a bit tricky for Ieyasu because while it would give him more land, it would also make him weaker. The new land was far from the capital, Kyoto, and his family didn't have any history there, preventing him from having any traditional hold on the place. But Ieyasu accepted the offer because saying no would mean going to war against Hideyoshi, and that's something he could not afford. He set up his main base in a small fishing village called Edo and started building a castle there. During the 1590s, while Hideyoshi dissipated his army in two hideous battles in Korea, Ieyasu strengthened his control over the Kanto region. Ieyasu moved his headquarters to a small fishing village called Edo, where he started a big construction project to turn the area into a new political and cultural center, kind of like Kyoto. Today, Edo is known as Tokyo, the capital city of Japan, and the castle Ieyasu built later became the imperial palace we see today. Being in the eastern part of Japan, Ieyasu's power grew without getting involved in Hideyoshi's failed wars in Korea. As shown in the show, in 1598, Hideyoshi got sick, and while on his deathbed, he set up a council of five elders to rule until his son, Hideyori, was old enough to take over. Among the elders, Ieyasu was the most powerful. When Hideyoshi passed away, Ieyasu used his influence to try and take control for himself. The powerful daimyo split into two groups. Those in the west supported Hideyori, while those in the east supported Ieyasu. Although many smaller battles happened in between as a result of the growing power struggle, in October 1600, a great battle changed the course of history at Sekigahara near Lake Biwa in central Japan between these two sides. Ieyasu finally won, making him the leader and the de facto ruler of Japan. Tokugawa's relationship with Ishida Mitsunari Given how the show's premise is based on the tension between Toranaga and Ishido, it was only fair to separately discuss Tokugawa's rivalry with Ishida Mitsunari, the real-life inspiration to Ishido's character in Shogun. Following the Taiko's death, Ishida led an army to capture Fushimi and Osaka Castle. Meanwhile, Tokugawa forged alliances with other daimyo, who opposed Hideyoshi, the former Taiko. These actions provoked frustration and opposition from other regions, with Ishida Mitsunari leading the charge of the brawl, similar to Lord Ishido in the show. Now, just how Ishido hates Toranaga's guts in the show, Ishida harbored a strong desire to eliminate Tokugawa. However, when Tokugawa's generals uncovered Ishida's plans, they attempted to assassinate him. Surprisingly, it was actually Tokugawa who offered protection to Ishida, despite the initial plot of being the one targeting Ishida himself. As puzzling as it may sound, it's all part of feudal politics. As it is said that Tokugawa protected Ishida because he saw him as a weak opponent and believed it was better to have him alive leading the enemy forces. Tokugawa was very confident in his ability to defeat Ishida and preferred this outcome over the possibility of another powerful regent taking Ishida's place. So kudos to his strategic prowess on that because this plan really worked. Ishida later led the Western Army to capture Fushimi Castle, while Tokugawa's forces took Gifu Castle. This led to the final battle of Sekigahara, where Tokugawa's knowledge, mindset, and skills as a warrior played a crucial role. Despite being outnumbered by Ishida's forces, Tokugawa influenced his victory by striking a deal with the daimyo in the Western Army and promising them land if they switched alliances. Following Ishida's defeat, Tokugawa emerged as the ruler of Japan. After the son of the former Taiko lost his claim to power and was no longer in line for rulership, on the other hand, many of Ishida's Western Army soldiers were captured and subsequently executed. Ishida himself attempted to flee, but was captured and eventually executed in Kyoto. His severed head was then displayed on a pike for all to see, symbolizing Tokugawa Ieyasu's definitive triumph as the victor of the Battle of Sekigahara. How did Tokugawa Ieyasu become Shogun? After winning the great battle and rising to power, Ieyasu made radical changes to land ownership. He confiscated land from daimyo he considered enemies and kept some for himself while giving some to his allies. Additionally, he weakened other daimyo by relocating them from their usual territories to new lands. Even Hideyoshi's son, Hideyori, had much less land than before. 
although he stayed in Osaka Castle. In 1603, Ieyasu convinced the Emperor of Japan to name him as Shogun. Now, this title was first used by Minamoto no Yoritomo in the late 12th century, when he set up the first warrior government in Kamakura, and these warrior governments were called Bakufu in Japanese, which means tent government in English. After the Minamoto clan lost power in 1333, the Ashikaga family created a new Bakufu in Kyoto's Muromachi area, and this government lasted until 1573, when Oda Nobunaga destroyed it. Ieyasu then started the third warrior government in Japan's history, known as the Tokugawa or Edo Bakufu. Now you should know that the period of warrior rule in Japan, often called feudalism, can be misunderstood. Unlike Europe, where feudalism emerged after the fall of the Roman Empire, Japan's imperial system from the Nara period continued. Although the imperial family didn't have much political power to begin with, they could give legitimacy to warrior rule by conferring titles like Shogun, which was crucial for figures like Ieyasu because this authority allowed him to establish a new government that lasted over 250 years. After the Battle of Sekigahara, the Tokugawa controlled about 30% of Japan directly, while local daimyo families governed the rest. Ieyasu respected these families' hereditary rights to rule their areas as long as they recognized Tokugawa's authority nationally. At the same time, Ieyasu divided the daimyos into three categories within his new system, which he called the Bakuhan. This first category was the Shinpan, who were related to the Tokugawa clan, the Fudai, who were the loyalists to Ieyasu, and the Tozama, those who pledged loyalty to him after the Battle of Sekigahara. Each class had different levels of restrictions, all centered around Edo, allowing for centralized control over everything. Apart from reorganizing land ownership, Ieyasu introduced several policies to limit the influence of the daimyo. He imposed restrictions on the size of daimyo armies, allowed them to have only one castle in their domain, and required them to take approval for any repairs to their fortifications. Additionally, a hereditary four-tier class system was established by him, with warriors at the top, followed by farmers, artisans, and merchants. Now, this information is relevant because to understand Yoshi Toranaga's character, you must understand the kind of advanced strategist Tokugawa was, because these measures were carefully designed by him to maintain a balance of power, favoring the Tokugawa clan and its successors for decades to come. In 1605, just two years later, Ieyasu relinquished the title of Shogun to pass it on to his third son, Hidehara. He had two main reasons for this decision. Firstly, he wanted to establish the idea that the Tokugawa family had a right to inherit the position of shogun. Although he still held power, this move solidified the shogunate as a hereditary title, preventing potential claims from other daimyos like Hideyori, who was finally defeated by Tokugawa in 1615, finalizing the unification. Secondly, Ieyasu aimed to free himself from the daily responsibilities of being shogun, so he could focus on strengthening the Tokugawa family's power. After stepping down, he moved to Sunpu in modern-day Shizuoka Prefecture, where he set up a shadow government to continue governing the country effectively. Finally, in 1616, Tokugawa passed away due to an illness at the age of 73. Following his death, an impressive mausoleum and shrine were constructed in Nikko, located north of Edo. The Tokugawa shogunate governed Japan for over 250 years, marking an era characterized by peace, stability, and economic prosperity. However, this period of success was achieved through strict and at times ruthless control exerted by the Tokugawa regime. The shogunate's reign came to an end only with the Meiji Restoration in 1868, which reinstated direct imperial rule in Japan. Maybe you Tokugawa's relationship with William Adams, aka the real-life John Blackthorne. Hailing from Gillingham in Kent, William Adams started his maritime journey at the young age of 12, working in a shipyard. Over time, he honed his skills as a sailor, pilot, and navigator, and even played a role in defeating the Spanish Armada in 1588. Following this, he joined a fleet of Dutch merchant ships heading to the East Indies. In 1600, Adam's ship arrived in Japan, where he came before Tokugawa Ieyasu just months before the decisive battle of Sekigahara. Ieyasu was so impressed by the Englishman that he appointed him as an advisor and bestowed upon him land, a title, and the status of a samurai, with lands near Edo. Much like Ieyasu's influence on Toranaga and Shogun, the character of John Blackthorne is loosely inspired by William Adams. William Adams did not play a role in helping Tokugawa become Shogun, or teach him how to dive as depicted in the book or the show. He did become one of Tokugawa's most trusted advisors, significantly influencing Japan's relation with European powers. 
Despite Tokugawa's rise to power after Sekigahara in 1600, he faced ongoing challenges until 1615, when he finally subdued all opposition, solidifying his rule over Japan. One major challenge was dealing with the Portuguese, who monopolized foreign trade, especially Chinese silks, crucial for Japanese clothing, and lead, which was essential for weapons. By 1603, Adams had relocated from Uraga to Edo, where he regularly advised Tokugawa. During one of these consultations, he tasked Adams with construction of a Western-style ship. With the assistance of Japanese workers, Adams built the ship, introducing Western shipbuilding techniques to Japan in the process. Now, Tokugawa eagerly sought ships like Adams for his own trading ventures in Asia. Impressed by Adams' 80-ton vessel, Ieyasu welcomed him into his inner circle. Adams took on the role of a tutor to Ieyasu, sharing his knowledge of mathematics, geometry, astronomy, and of course, global politics. When Adams completed a second, larger ship, weighing 120 tons, Ieyasu was delighted and rewarded him with an estate on the Miura Peninsula. He also appointed Adams as Hatamoto, a direct retainer, which came with increased income and numerous households to serve him. This promotion essentially elevated Adams to the status of a minor lord. Although the show kinda rushed this part, because Blackthorn has not climbed up that social ladder yet or built ships, he simply helped Toranaga every now and then to secure himself such a fancy title in the show. With his growing influence, William Adams urged Ieyasu to engage with Dutch and English traders. Although Adams himself was prohibited from leaving Japan, he successfully persuaded Tokugawa to permit two of his countrymen to do so. Consequently, in 1609, the first Dutch vessel arrived in Japan since Adams' own ship. Through various letters to outbound traders, Adams facilitated the arrival of English traders in 1613. By this time, he had become Ieyasu's official interpreter and played a pivotal role in establishing an English trading factory. But one of Adams' most significant moments came in 1611 when the Spanish arrived, offering trade on the condition that Tokugawa severed ties with the Dutch. However, this proposition clashed with Tokugawa's policy, yet he still allowed the Spanish to trade and send missionaries to Japan. When Adams learned of the Spanish surveying Edo Bay, ostensibly for anchorage, he strongly cautioned Tokugawa against it, fearing it was a prelude to invasion. Adams warned him about the potential consequences of allowing missionaries, foreseeing a rise in Christianity and its potential threat to Tokugawa's government. This realization led to the beginning of the suppression of Christians in Japan, ultimately culminating in the closure of Japan to Christians and the relocation of Portuguese and Dutch traders to Nagasaki. So in a way, Adams' advice had a profound impact on Japan's diplomatic relationships and the course of its history. Tokugawa recognized the strategic advantage of keeping William Adams alive, contrary to the requests of Jesuits and Catholics, for his execution after he first arrived on shore. Although just like seen in the show with Blackthorn, Adams was also interrogated for one whole month. But as he gained Tokugawa's trust and gave proof of his loyalty, he became deeply integrated into Japanese culture. Eventually, Tokugawa bestowed upon Adams the authority of a samurai, symbolizing a rebirth where the identity of William Adams was considered dead. Despite allowing other prisoners from the shipwreck to go free, Tokugawa never permitted Adams to leave Japan. This restriction led Adams to establish a new life in Japan, marrying a local woman and having two more children. Tokugawa knew how to use Adams' expertise and loyalty to his benefit, and hence never let him leave, until 1613. But later, Adams never chose to leave, given he was now a Japanese lord, and had comfortably settled in his life in Japan. <laughs> Tokugawa Ieyasu's Character Analysis Tokugawa Ieyasu was a renowned warrior, having reportedly participated in nearly 100 battles, and it was leadership qualities and strategic acumen that ultimately propelled him to become the influential ruler he was. While he could easily switch loyalties when necessary, once he ascended to power, his loyalty was something that either had to be given or needed to be earned. Despite his indomitable leadership, Tokugawa was not particularly popular among the populace. Rather, it was the fear he instilled that garnered him the respect as a ruler. Plus, he focused primarily on internal affairs, and had no ambitions of expanding Japan's borders beyond its shores, unlike predecessors like Hideyoshi, who had aspirations in Korea, even though they failed. In matters of religion, Tokugawa was not inclined towards Christianity, which was something we saw even in the show, given how indifferent he was to the entire concept of religion, and how he was quite passive-aggressive towards Mariko's beliefs in the show. His disdain for Catholics mirrored real-life events, leading to the persecution and eventual ban of Catholicism in Japan in 1614. Tokugawa Ieyasu led a complex personal life, 
He had two wives, numerous concubines, and a large number of children with these women. Till now, the show appears to align with historical facts. Although Tokugawa's reserved demeanor in the early episodes may evolve as the series progresses, especially with significant historical events that we could see unravel, given he has not reached Edo. So that's it for the real-life Yoshi Toranaga's history. So far, the show is making us all side with Toranaga, but given the kind of person he was in real life, I don't see it staying that way very long. What do you think about his character? Also, would you like us to do more such videos on Shogun's real-life inspired characters? Let us know in the comment box below. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone!